If you speak with anyone about Panama City outside of the United States, they might understandably think you're referring to the capital of Panama, which is some 1,500 miles to the south. And Panama City, Panama actually sits on the Pacific Ocean, not our gorgeous Gulf of Mexico. Panama City Beach, Florida became a viable tourism destination after the St. Andrews Bay Bridge was built in 1929, connecting the Sugar Sand Barrier Island to Panama City proper. Panama City Beach was officially incorporated in Bay County on May 2nd, 1936. This is, first and foremost, a resort town. And it's pretty much been that way since the very beginning. Gideon Thomas built the Panama City Hotel in 1935 and aggressively marketed tourism at a time when most locals were only interested in farming. Later, the town of Panama City Beach merged with three other tiny neighboring communities, including West Panama City Beach, Long Beach, and Edgewater. Collectively, they kept the name Panama City Beach. Paris Janos grew up here. He's a very familiar face as he hosted the daily news here on the Emerald Coast for some 40 plus years. My first memories of Panama City Beach were when I was about eight years old and my family came here to visit. I thought, my goodness, how can it be so hot? But the beach was beautiful, white sand, beautiful water. Uh, about a year later, my family decided to move here because we loved it so very much and bought a small motel on Thomas Drive. Growing up on Panama City Beach was pretty cool because at that time, it was much quieter than it is now. There were no high rises on the beach. The only high rises were the high rise sand dunes that populated a large portion of the beach. The tourist season was pretty strong, but it ended. When Labor Day came, the beach shut down. I'm talking gas stations closed, restaurants closed, motels closed. The beach was pretty much desolate, except for the few people that still lived here. Originally a community of low-rise cottages, mom-and-pop hotels, and laid-back bars such as The Hangout, the beachfront resort area evolved over the decades as word spread about its 27 miles of white sand and spectacular gulf sunsets. In the early 1960s, a group of business owners led by visionary James Lark pooled their resources to develop a roadside attraction that they dubbed Miracle Strip Amusement Park. Miracle Strip referred to what we now call Front Beach Road. So after we got done cruising the strip, young people would go to the Miracle Strip Amusement Park. And it was the most awesome attraction in Panama City Beach at the time. The big feature of it was the Starliner roller coaster, which was an old wooden coaster, and it, it hurt your bottom. And it was so exciting though. It was what a, what a great ride that was. And, uh, and over the years, it, it transformed and they updated it and put in new rides. And uh, there was Dante's Inferno and uh, the Haunted Mansion. It was great. The Haunted House was fantastic too. My favorite was the bullet. Centrifugal force would pin you down into your seat and it would go round and round and round. And uh, when I was a young kid, I made friends with the ride operators. And when people would get on that ride and scream to be let off, they would stop the ride and then he'd let me get back on and ride the duration of the ride because I used to love it. Miracle Strip Amusement Park entertained over 20 million visitors until it officially ran its course and closed its gates in 2004. If you visited Panama City Beach in the 1960s, 1970s, or 1980s, there's a decent chance you also hopped on the train to Ghost Town at Petticoat Junction Amusement Park. So Petticoat Junction Amusement Park had the train that took you to the Wild West town and you would go there and they'd do shootouts and they were pretty action-packed and the, the people that did them I'm sure had a good time doing them and the folks that came from out of town looked forward to going to Petticoat Junction just about as much as Miracle Strip Amusement Park but Miracle Strip Amusement Park that was the big draw. When MTV hit the beach in the late 1980s Panama City Beach became the most famous spring break destination on the planet. The world's biggest rock stars, comedians, A-list Hollywood actors, and sandy socialites all descended here, followed by millions of young partiers seeking to partake in the rowdy revelry. But eventually, as kids are prone to do, they grew up. 
no longer interested in hair bands and keg stands, these spry spring breakers settled down. Well, to, to some degree, anyway. And they started their own families. Today, Panama City Beach draws droves of tourists with family-friendly attractions, including the colorfully eclectic Pier Park shopping destination, a giant sky wheel that virtually rolls out into the sea, Gulf World Marine Park Zoo World, and events ranging from food and wine festivals to Thunder Beach, which attracts thousands of Harley-Davidson enthusiasts every spring and fall from all across the United States. What's very special about Panama City Beach that maybe a lot of people aren't aware of is that it is bookended by two beautiful state parks. You have St. Andrews State Park on the east end of the county, and at the other end, you have Camp Helen State Park. Both unique, pristine, beautiful, wonderful hidden gems that you can go to and see what the beach used to look like a very long time ago. You can get away from it all. If fishing is your fix, options abound here in PCB. From the harbor, you can be pulling them in from the bay or gulf within minutes. The remote shell island separates the two and provides a perfect day trip for quite literally getting away from it all. You can hire a captain, take a shuttle, rent a pontoon, or BYOB. That's bring your own boat. Shell Island will give you a taste of what this place was like before the circus came to town. If you don't yet have your sea legs, there are two prominent fishing piers in Panama City Beach, the Russell Fields Pier and the M.B. Miller Pier often referred to as the City Pier and the County Pier. Constructed within one year of each other, first in 2009 and then in 2010, these two massive concrete piers were built to resist the hurricane forces and they're the longest twin fishing piers found anywhere on the Gulf of Mexico, each stretching some 1,500 feet out into truly excellent fishing waters. So, grab a pole, ice down a bucket, slather up the youngins with sunscreen, and crank up a classic 80s playlist through your Bluetooth speaker. Even if you don't catch a big fish, you're pretty certain to reel in some memories, old and new, ones that will last a lifetime.